Today I'll show you 10 of my favorite everyday carry clip point knives. Now most of these, they're gonna cost you under $100. I do have a few, few expensive ones on the list, but really that's just so you have a better understanding of exactly what's out there. We're gonna go ahead and focus though today on the standard clip point blade shape, like you see here on this Buck 110, because believe it or not, there's a bunch of different like variations that, that are out there for sale. I mean, there's stuff like the California clip, the, uh, the long clip, saber clip, Turkish, and even my favorite, the Texas tickler. Hey, how you doing? If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay. Go ahead and consider clicking on that subscribe if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. And as usual, if you see anything that you like in this video, I will make sure to go ahead and put links to buy down in the description. All right, we're gonna start things off with a knife that's fairly new to the channel. This is from San Renmu, and it's the SRM 9201. Now you already saw this one. This is the, uh, the the satin version. And then they also went ahead and made a, this is a black wash blade with like, I don't know, what do you want to call that? Like dark earth uh, G10 scales. First thing I like here is going to be, well, the, the price. I mean, at, at about $30, you're getting, it's a D2 steel with G10 handle. And you can see already the multiple deployment options. The difference here though, is that this blade, unlike Benchmade, this blade is riding on a ball bearing pivot instead of the bronze washer. So you can see, I go ahead and pull back on that lock and it drops right shut. I mean, it was doing that, it was doing that since day one. So you've probably noticed that this is a, it's a true ambidextrous knife. And that's not just because of the thumb hole and the lock, but that deep carry pocket clip, yep. You can go ahead and switch that to the other side for us lefties. Now there is just a few, there's a couple minor things that I, that I don't like here. And the first one, if you'd notice, yeah, the studs for that lock, I, I wouldn't mind if they just stuck out just a little bit, just a little bit further. I mean, we're not talking about, we're not talking about much here. And the handle. I think that the handle feels, well, it feels a little bit unfinished. Like they, they missed, they missed like sanding a couple spots. Number nine is gonna be from Kubi. This is the KU 200. I just love this very subtle clip point uh, blade shape of the KU 200. Now for about $87, you can get, this is S35 VN blade steel titanium scales yes it's a frame lock with a that's like a carbon fiber you see that that's like a carbon fiber insert 87 dollars. that's even less than when i paid when i bought this the blade is riding on a a ball bearing pivot Whew. so that action is really good and you can see it drops shut with just a couple just a few shakes and then now notice here you can see like that it has these like long milled grooves and they do, let's see. Oh yeah, they are on, they're on both sides. And I think that they were just such a good idea because at first I wasn't hundred percent sure what they were for, but now I realize is that it's to help you hold on to the handle, like with your fingertips. So you see that? And it helps you to just get a better grip during deployment, genius. Even with that that blade, okay, it's four. That's four millimeters thick. Yeah, that that is some hefty stuff. But it still cuts like really, really well. I mean, I know that this is nothing but plastic, but holy cow, is that a good time? I'll be the first to admit, I don't necessarily like. I don't love. I don't really like the design like with that diamond pattern stuff on this, it's a milled titanium clip, but look at it this way. Oh man, look at that. It's just connected by the one screw up at the top. So you get a really nice, practically, that's practically deep carry. And, oh, it has some really nice, really nice tension. 
Unfortunately, there is, there's a couple like minor issues uh, that I got to point out. And the first one really is going to probably affect more like people with larger hands or lefties like myself. But if you go ahead and you put any pressure on the lock bar, okay, during deployment, that blade like will not fire unless if you get the budget version, the uh, KU216, that's not going to be an issue because that's a liner lock. There's like no, there's no skeletonization going on like of any kind inside. And that's really a missed opportunity because it could have potentially brought down that, that 4.5 ounce weight. No, that's not a lot, but for a knife of this size, it's getting there. Number eight, I've got the Cold Steel Voyager. If for some reason you're not really a fan of the of the Voyager, there is another one that would really could work in this spot too, and it's the Recon One because it also is available in a clip point. This is actually well, first it's quite flickable as you just saw, but it's actually like one of my favorite clip point blades, and that's just because of its shape. I mean, it has that it's a really wide or some of you like to call it tall profile with and this one also it does not have a very it's not an exaggerated trailing point you get a lot of knife here for about fifty dollars and it has it's an aus aus 10 steel blade so which is a, it's a decent budget steel and this has to be one of the most like comfortable this is one of the most comfortable handles that i've ever used and keep in mind now my hands I, I wear like a medium sized glove and look at that there's still some handle sticking out you had to know that this one would be on the list from Civivi I got the rustic gent I almost said rusty and you all know this one it has just been a huge seller for Civivi and hey, for good reason I mean it is just it's a well-made traditional folder and it does have, I'm going to use my other hand here. It does have like a little, it has a half stop. And the fact that it can be like completely, this can be completely disassembled. I mean, that I think just makes it even more unique. And I probably don't even need to do this, but I want to because it's fun. So this, that hollow ground, you can see D2 blade is, well, it's super thin. Oh man, and like super slicey. And that long, that long nail nick you can see on both sides, it, it does, I mean, it works, it works just fine, you know, for opening the, the blade. But I went ahead and you can see I was able to add one of those, it's called a quick thumb stud. And now, oh man, makes it even easier. You know, I had a really hard time trying to come up with any kind of a, any kind of an issue with this knife. So I got nothing here, but I will go ahead and reach and say, I wish it had a pocket clip. That's it. I mean, you get a really nice, like a little leather pocket sheath, but a clip on here would make this practically perfect for me. And I'm still trying to figure out a way to add one. I haven't given up yet. If any of you have any ideas, would you, hey, let us know. All right, number six. I have a very, very flickable Cold Steel Code 4. Between this and the American Lawman, I always like switch back and forth with those two on like which one is my favorite Cold Steel knife. So today it's going to be the Code 4. Tomorrow it might be the American Lawman. Now, just like the Voyager that I showed you a couple minutes ago, I like the the clip point blade here on the Code 4 for the same reason, because it's just like really subtle with these aluminum scales that are normally, normally they're really slick. And, but I found this version with the black aluminum from White Mountain Knives, which it actually, this has better traction than the standard version. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description for this. And if they're still there, hey, awesome. Number five, from Artisan Cutlery, this is the small Hyperion. This is an exclusive version that you can only get 
at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and it has a D2 blade and brown micarta scales. Now I know a three inch blade is kind of small, but if you take a closer look, I mean, at least you're able to use every bit of that sharpened edge because there's no thumb studs or finger choil, just a really small sharpening choil. So this, wow. Yeah, and that, that thin blade stock, holy cow does this cut. And the long nail nick that it is on, yeah, it is on both sides. It provides like a second deployment method, you know, especially if you're somebody that just likes to kind of pinch and pull. But I'm unable to like use it to spidey flick it. Like there is just, no, there's absolutely there's no room and I can't same goes for like a slope oh, there I got it wow I can't believe I was able to okay so you can slow roll it open and as long as we're already talking about that deployment I might as well just go ahead and show you because it is really it's really good and I I've I've been trying nope I cannot get it to fail now it's not it's not drop and shut or any I mean it will you know with a couple hard shakes so it's not going to drop shut the blade is pretty light but you know what that's okay that 3.75 micarta handle it's just big enough for my for my medium sized hand and it actually does have some pretty good traction check out these handle details though you see that backspacer yeah that is some solid copper and then notice just like the uh Civivi shredder it's got like a little hidden uh, lanyard post and of course we get the, like a standard deep carry pocket clip, but it is two positions. So it's switchable for us lefties and look at the, look at the attachment point. Yep. That is totally recessed. And they even went ahead and used flat screws. Bravo. The only minor issue that I, I have with this is just regarding that, that flipper tab. Now I know it's probably necessary for the deployment, but I just don't, I don't like how long that that is, especially like in the open position. Yeah, I mean, it makes it look even, even larger. At number four, I got the latest release from Civivi. Oh yeah, this is the Ortis. Now, up until very recent, there wasn't much of a difference between this blade here and, and you can see the blade on the Civivi Dogma. Both are hollow ground clip points with really nice, uh, generous sized forward finger choils. Since the two blades are, are so similar, I'm, I'm kind of torn between the price differences between the two. I mean, you can get the Ortis here. It's 9CR18 MOV for about $40. Or you can go ahead and pick up a, a Dogma with a D2 steel blade, and that's gonna run you about $48. What really sets like the two knives apart is gonna be the, the handle material. Now, to keep the price down on the Ortis Civivi, they went with FRN scales, which, uh, you know what, they're comfortable, but in all honesty, they, they do feel kind of cheap. You should have seen me trying to spidey flick this blade open. I mean, you would have laughed. I really had to pay attention to how I grip this handle when trying to flick the blade open because initially I was holding it too tight. So it didn't matter how hard I tried, that blade was not gonna open. But as soon as I, I relax my grip to the point where it almost feels like it's gonna slip out of my hands. As soon as I relax the grip, Oh yeah, it was off to the races. I love this new, this new deep carry clip that Civivi is starting to use because look at that. You can fit just so much. It fits it like a thicker pocket material under there. There's a lot more room. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's got a hidden lanyard post. I just caught that. Okay, I promise you this is the last Civivi on this list and it's the dogma. Oh, and have you seen, have you seen that new, the new dogma blade? I guess it looks like they did away with 
the thumb hole here and they added a fuller. And I mean, I'm sure, you know, the Ortis was the big reason why they, they made the change. I mean, come on, look at the two side by side. They even have faux bolsters, both of them. Last thing that I love about the Dogma is the blade to handle ratio because Civivi was able to fit a, a three and a half inch blade into a four and a quarter inch handle. That's efficient. I've really been looking forward to uh, showing you this, this knife. So at number two is gonna be from Buck. It's the Ranger 112 Auto. There's just no way that I could have a top 10 clip point list without showing the Buck 110 or 112. I mean, these knives have been around for a long time. I mean, I think, what, at least since the dinosaurs were hanging out, you're getting the very same strong backlock that's on the manual versions, but the difference is only in how the blade deploys. Well, that and S30V blade steel. I will say though, it's heavy. I mean, it practically weighs as much as a small child. Okay, I'm kidding about that, but it's heavy. All right, you ready to see my number one favorite clip point everyday carry knife from Benchmade? This is the Mini Crooked River. I remember just like it was practically yesterday when the smaller version was released. I mean, I had never been that excited, you know, over a production folder before. And if you don't believe me, go ahead, watch the unboxing, click on that link and it'll take you to the video. See for yourself. I know this is expensive. I mean, sitting at around $200, but Benchmade, they really did do a lot of things right here. And of course, we cannot forget about that 3.4 inch S30V blade because it really is the star of the show here. All right, now I've went ahead and shown you mine. Let's see yours. It's your turn. What are some of your favorite knives that have clip point blades? And don't worry, if you don't have 10, that's okay. Put as many as you possibly can, but just go ahead and leave your list in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and you got, I mean, any value from it, would you do me a favor and just let me know by leaving one of those. And if not, hey, no hard feelings, but let me know why. Up on the screen now is gonna be two videos. One is that YouTube is recommending of mine that you should watch next. The other is gonna be a, a link to my playlist, which is just full of all of my top 10 videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video. Hey guys, take care. See you later.